everybody and today I'm going to be talking about the new version of cash flow and how to play this new version. So the first thing that I want to explain in this video is how to fill in your form and this is what the form looks like and this form is quite easy to fill in. You're going to find all of these different profession cards and if we take one of those and then turn it over you'll see that it looks a lot like uh, the form and so what we can start to do is we can start to fill in all the details so we'll see if we can zoom in on some of these but our income is going to be 4,600 and let's have a look our taxes are 900 we have 700 worth of home mortgage payments. We just need to make sure that we put it into the right part. And then our passive income starts at zero. So we can finish filling all of those in. Our total income here is 4,600. And we have a total expenses of 3,000 to start off with. There we go. That leaves us a cash flow of 1,600. And then we can also fill in our savings, which starts at 400. And we want to put in our liabilities as well. Our home mortgage is 75,000. And we have school loans at 12,000. And car and credit card, we have no retail debt. So the idea is that we copy everything from this card over across. So we can see exactly how much income we are making, how much our expenses are. And we start with zero passive income. We want to get this number higher than our total expenses because then we are financially free. And this is the cash flow. This is what we have left after we've paid all of our expenses. And obviously we have our assets, things that make us money and things that cost us money, things that we need to pay for, the home mortgage that we are paying off over time, school loans, car loans, credit cards, retail debt, all of those different things. And then we also have our real estate and businesses that we buy throughout the game. And we'll also talk about the loan at some point. But this helps us to get started. Uh, this is filling in the form and we'll talk about other things in the next videos. Mm -hmm. In our last video, we spoke about how to fill in the initial form, which you can see here, which is our income statement and balance sheet. But this new version has two different kinds of forms. We also have this form here, which is our cash ledger. And our cash ledger is very interesting because the first version of cash flow used to have uh, physical cash in there. So it would look a little bit like this, Monopoly money. This is actually real money. Um, but the original game had Monopoly money and you would use that to pay for things. In this case, what we have is a cash ledger. And so our cash ledger is going to allow us to play without cash. So this version doesn't have any physical cash in the game. So the way that this one works, we no longer need this for a second, is that we are going to start with our starting balance. Let's say that our starting balance in this case was 1,600 plus our savings of 400. Uh, I might have actually, yes, I got that the right way around. So that's going to give us 2,000. And now each time we do something, we need to see whether it's going to change our cash position. So let's say that I buy a property and I need a down payment of $1,000 for that. So I'll circle the little minus here and then I will put 1,500. And so I start with 2,000, I take away 1,500 and I have 500 left. Now I can, if I want to write down what that was for, so I can write down three to house, and that way I can keep track of what I am doing throughout the game. Now let's say that the next thing that happens is I get a paycheck. That means money is physically coming into my bank account. Let's say that my um, passive income is 1,600 still. Sorry, my uh, cash flow is 1,600. So I'll put plus 1,600 and then I might put PC for paycheck. And now we add that together, it will give me 2,100. And so I can constantly see how much cash I have as I am playing the game. So this form is a new form for some of you who may have played the old version. This allows us to play without having cash in the game. It's a little bit like Monopoly with the credit card, I suppose. Um, 
So this is the uh, the new form that you might need to know how to fill in. Again, as always, fill it in with pencil because you're going to be making changes and rubbing things out. I find it very, very helpful to write down what it is that you actually uh, purchased and received. So you can actually keep track of the game really well. And I find that that is a great way being able to look back and understanding what happened. And that's where the real learning happens. And we'll talk more about that in the game when you come and play with us and take it to a whole new level, but this gets you started. In the last video, I showed you how to fill in all of your forms from this card here. But in this video, we're going to show you how to actually play the game itself. So let's set everything up. This is what the board looks like. And this is the newer version just here. Let's make sure that that is all on the screen. There we go. So we're going to obviously start by taking one of these cards. And then now we need to set up the board by putting the small deals on the small deal section. We've got the market cards on the market section, the blue ones. We've got the doodads that we'll place over here on the doodad section on the red. And the big deal cards, which are also green, but these ones are slightly bigger deals. Then what you want to do next is you want to get everybody to choose a color. We'll just put the rats down here. So we've got an orange rat, got a red rat, a yellow rat, etc, etc. And we have two dice as well. Now, with the other game, you'd also have cash, but we don't have cash in this one. You want to make sure that everybody starts off by filling in their forms, which we just showed you. Everybody gets a pencil, and you might put some rubbers around the table. And what we are going to do is we're going to get everybody to choose a color and put their rats here on this starting position over here. Then everybody is going to roll one dice and start moving around the board in a clockwise fashion. So let's say that I roll a... what are we going to roll? Let's say we roll a three. So I'm going to move one, two, three. And this is going to then be a green square, which means I get to choose either a small deal or a big deal. Now, small deals generally cost less than $7,000. The big deals cost more than $7,000. So depending on where you are in the game, uh, you can choose whichever you think is going to be most appropriate for you. You can borrow money. Um, and these are optional. So if you like the deal, you can take it. If you don't like the deal, you don't have to take it. So choose whichever you like. Uh, the other squares around the circle are this one here, which is the doodad. Obviously, the red corresponds with the red. These are things that you might spend money on throughout your life. So these could be things that break down. These could be things that you splurge on. So it could be something that uh, you feel compelled to buy, for example. Then we also have the blue squares. These are the market cards. So if you've bought one of these green ones, then obviously you might want to sell it for a better price. And you can do that in the market card. So the market card will allow you to sell one of these assets. It could be a house, it could be shares, anything similar to that. Now, the other cards that you will find around the board is this one here, which is the charity. So if you land on this one, you can donate 10% of your total income, and then you can use one or two dice for the next three turns. So I could say, for example, nominate that I want to roll one dice for the first one, but then the next one, I might want to move around the board a little bit faster. I can roll two dice, and then for the third time, I might want to do that again, and I can roll two dice. I can't roll one dice and then change my mind and want to roll a second dice. Uh, you need to nominate before you start how many dice you're going to roll, and then you can take it from there. So that's the charity. It's optional, so that's only if you want to. Uh, the other one is downsize. This is where you lose your job. Let's say that I land on downsize then what I'm going to need to do is I need to, uh, one, pay my total expenses. So whatever that is on my form, and this is the form just here. So I have my total expenses just here. Whatever they are, in this case, 3,000, I would need to pay 3,000. And then also, on top of having to still continue to pay my rent and pay for food, because even when I'm not working, I need to do that. I will need to put my rent on the outside. I'm going to be looking for work, and I'm going to have everybody else roll their dice. Then when it's my turn, I'll move in one and I don't take a turn, and then everybody rolls their dice again, I move back in, and then when it's my turn again, then I can roll again and start moving around the board. Okay, uh, we also have this one here, which is the baby. Um, everybody loves babies in real life, but nobody seems to like them in the game, which is very, very interesting. If you have a baby, then you will find your baby on your form here, 
you will see child expenses. You should then change the number of children. So if you don't have any children, you will change that to one and your child expenses will be on your card. So in this case, the engineer has child expenses of $200. So I'd add one $200 and then I'd add child expenses $200 to my expenses. This would increase my expenses by 200, most probably reducing my cash flow by 200. So if you land on baby, you add a baby to your list and you can only have three babies. Once you've had three babies, then you get the operation and there are no more babies for you. And finally, there is the paycheck. If you land on this one, or even if you pass, if I am here and I pass the paycheck, then I need to ask for my paycheck and I would then not collect the money personally, but I would add in the paycheck just like we showed you in the previous video where I added the paycheck of 1,600 to the form, uh, increasing my amount of cash, which then allows me to have more cash, which then might help me go from a small deal to a big deal. Now, we keep going around the circle and the idea is to eventually get my passive income, which is currently at zero on this form here, uh, and we want to get that higher than my total expenses. So once I have my passive income higher than my total expenses, then you get to play along the outside. And I'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, we want to get our passive income higher than our total expenses, and then we can go to the next stage. Uh, but very quickly before we finish, one more thing that I need to mention is that you can take out a loan. So let's say that I decide I want to borrow $1,000. I can write down $1,000 here. I need to make sure that I also write down that I've spent an extra thousand by going into the negative on this form here. And then I can uh, take that loan of a thousand and my loan payment is at 10%. So I'd need to pay a hundred dollars here. So my expenses go up by a hundred. I add a hundred and most probably my cash flow will go down unless I have some income to offset that. But we can talk about that when you come and play with us because this game is the most fun when you play with people who understand how it works. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about the next game that we're going to be playing and one of the versions that we play in which uh, we're going to be reenacting a scenario that is actually happening right now, which is 2022. So if you're watching in 2022, this is going to be very relevant. And who knows, it might be relevant again in a couple of years time, but this will get you started. And this is how you play the new version of Cashflow. In the last video, I showed you how to play this new version of Cashflow. And I showed you how to play the inside circle, but now I'm gonna show you how to play the outside. So we were talking in the last video about getting your passive income higher than your total expenses. Let's say that you've just achieved that. Then we are going to use a different form, which is this one here. And I'll show you how to fill it in as we are doing this. First of all, let's say that I've achieved my goal and so now I want to move to the outside and you'll see that there are certain numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to roll the dice to see where I start. In this case, number five. So I'll put my rat here on number five and then on the outside, we use two dice. So I'm going to roll two dice here and I'm going to say that I roll a four. So I'm going to move clockwise as usual, one, two, three, four. And in this case, I'm going to receive my cash flow day. But first of all, we need to fill in a couple of details. So I need to write down how much my passive income was from the other side. Oops, let's see if I can do this so that you can actually see it without me covering the camera. So let's say that I had a passive income of $3,000 on the other side. I then multiply that by 100, which will give me 300,000 new income. And I want to be able to either have this as my goal and achieve 50,000 extra. So that means that my fast track winning number is 350,000. And that's my goal for the game. So let's say that I land on my cash flow. So first of all, I am going to take my other form. There's a little bit more forms, but it's a cashless version. And I might use a new column and I'm going to say that I'm going to start with my 300,000. So I get my 300,000 payment. And that is what I'm going to start the game with. So I received my payment and I will take another turn. And in this case, I'm gonna roll a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now in this case, I have the chance to buy a family a restaurant and it has 14,000 per month cash flow and a 300,000 down payment. I happen to have exactly 3,000. So I can write down a restaurant. Oops, I hope I'm on the screen. Restaurant just in here in the business section. I write down my monthly cash flow, which is 14,000. And my new cash flow is going to be 300,000 since I started with 300,000. And my new cash flow is 314, 
thousand. Now my aim is to get to 350,000 so you can see that I'm already well on my way and I would continue to roll and I would look to see if I can buy another business. One, two, three, four, five. And in this case, I'd be able to buy a heating and air conditioning business. And since I've just passed my cash flow, I collect another 314 and I would be good to go. So again, I would need to, first of all, make sure that I uh, write down that I spent my 300,000 and then I receive, uh, let's have a look, so that's zero. And then I receive my 314,000. In this case, I haven't actually received it yet. I actually only received 300, but let's say that I received my 314,000 and then I'd be up to 314,000. So the idea is to keep buying businesses until I get to that amount. The only other things that we need to be wary of is these red squares here. So every time I land on or pass my cash flow day, I get to collect that one, but I just need to be aware of these. So healthcare, roll one die. If it's one to three, you're covered pay half of your cash. If it's four to six, you're not covered, pay all of your cash. There is another charity. There's a lawsuit, a tax audit, a bad partner, divorce, and unforeseen repairs. So you just want to be careful of those and continue buying businesses on the outside until you have achieved your goal of that extra 50,000. And that is how you play the outside of the new version of uh, cash flow. In the last few videos, I showed you how to play the new version of cash flow. And because currently it is August 2022, we are going through a little bit of an inflationary period and increasing interest rates. So today I want to show you something that we are going to be practicing every once in a while at the Sydney Cash Flow Club. We are going to be playing an inflationary version. So I've already showed you how to fill in all of the forms to get started with the game. I've showed you how to play the inside and the outside. And today we are going to be having a look at this inflationary version. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be playing the game cash flow as usual. So we're going to be rolling the dice. We're going to be moving around the board. But each time everybody at the table has had their turn, we're going to take a card. And once we've gone around uh, and everybody's had their turn, we are going to increase the inflation amount. So we're going to be keeping track on the back of the form here. We're going to be writing down inflation. And we're going to write down how many times inflation has increased and by what percentage. So number one, it might be a 2% increase in all of the prices. Then the next time everybody's had a turn, we might have number two, and we might have a 3% increase in prices. And so we're gonna to have to keep a track of this, and we're going to write down every time we pick a card, a new price. So the price was going to go up by 2%, then 3%, and so it will continue to rise. So it will be a little bit of calculating, but we will show you how to do that when you come and join us for this section. Now, we're also going to have the interest rate. And again, every time everybody's had a turn, the interest rate is going to start at a, a certain amount and we'll tell you what that is going to be. And then depending on what happens and how you roll the dice, it is either going to go up or it is going to go down. So again, we're going to keep track of that throughout the game and it might go from X to X plus one and then it might go to X plus one plus one, whereby it's gone up twice and then the next turn around it might go down again. So it might just be X plus one. And so we're going to keep track of interest rates and the inflation. Now, the reason we want to do this is we want to be prepared for when this happens in real life. Now, currently, as I said, it is August 2022. We have high inflation going on and we also have interest rates going up. Now, if you have to learn this in real life, it is a lot more challenging. So it's much better and much more fun to learn how to do this when you are playing a game like cash flow. Then if you have to learn it in real life and maybe stuff it up. So here you get the chance. Come and join us and we'll show you how you can use a different strategy to be able to survive inflation, how to feel comfortable with interest rates going up or down. Because none of these things have to be that scary if you have already got a strategy worked out on how to deal with it. As I said, 
Um, if you're doing it in real life, much more challenging. If you're a pilot and you suddenly have an emergency situation, you only have a few split seconds to make a decision to save the airplane. And the same in the real world. If you are dealing with inflation and interest rates for the very first time, then you're going to panic and not be sure of how to deal with it. But if you've already played through a scenario in a game-like setting where there is nothing at stake, then you're gonna be much more comfortable when it happens in real life because you already know what you can do and how you can protect yourself. So come and join us for this uh, version of the game that we play um, on a regular basis and learn how to play with inflation and interest rates so that you can do it in the game and then also do it in real life. We're looking forward to seeing you and thank you for joining us for this uh, video on how to play a new version of Cashflow.